Okay, welcome everybody. I'm going to make a start. I think most people have joined now. Um, so welcome. We're going to be talking about devising theatre today. I'm Sarah and I'm from Bloomsbury and I'm thrilled to welcome Jess Thorpe and Tashi Gore, who are authors of our Beginner's Guide to Devising Theatre. So you can see lovely Jess here. Hopefully Tashi's okay. She's okay. Got on okay. Yep, she's there. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, so you won't hear from me uh, for a lot until the end. So this is going to run till two o'clock. Um, we're going to hear, I'm going to hand over the reins in a minute and introduce, let um, Tashi and Jess introduce themselves. And then they're going to talk for around 30 minutes um, on all of their wonderful experience on devising theatre and their wonderful theatre company, um, Glass Performance, which is based up in Glasgow. Um, they've worked together for many years, so I'm really excited to hear about all their knowledge and experience in this area. <laughs> Um, and then we'll take um, just about 30 minutes of questions. So we've had lots in already, so I'll come on and ask those questions. But if you have any throughout the webinar, then just pop them in the chat box and we can, hopefully we'll get time to answer some of those as well. Okay, so enough from me. I'm gonna hand over, who's leading first lady? I'll just hand over to you. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm mute, I'm gonna mute, I'm gonna mute myself and then you won't hear from me. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Um, hi everyone, thanks. I don't know, I've no idea what you can see on the screen, but hopefully you can see both of us on the screen. Um, I'm Jess in the red jumper, and that's Tash there. Um, oh, I know, Tashi, hi. Um, just to explain a few things before we start. Um, yeah, so both of us live in Glasgow, but obviously um, you can see some moving boxes in my background, and Tash, I think you've also got quite a few moving boxes in I've your got a lot of I've got lots of suitcases behind me, so you can't see them, but yeah, That's all my suitcases. Because Tash and I are also um, currently, we're moving um, this week um, up to take over a, um, a new department at Dundee Rep and Scottish Dance Theatre, so uh, it's been one of those weeks. Before we begin, um, we did just want to give a wee disclaimer, was that um, Everyone's working at home, I think. So we're working at home and it's uh, here in the UK, it's over one o'clock. And uh, I have three children. Tasha's got uh, one child. So who knows what might happen in the background, but we are just being very empowered. I'm wearing my lipstick and we're gonna make the best of it. And hopefully we'll be able to get through the hour without any interruptions. But if we do, it's just what it looks like, isn't it? Working at home. So yeah, that's my wee disclaimer before we start. <laughs> over to you, Tash. Okay, hi everyone, and um, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I just thought I'd start by just um, telling you a little bit about um, our, our organisation. So, as Jess said, we're based in, we have been based in Glasgow for the last 21 years, um, and we've been working together, running Glass Performance for the last 16 years. Um, one of the things that we, the, the way the Glass Performance works is that we um, devise theatre and um, we work with a kind of non-narrative or post-dramatic form um, and often the stories that we tell are autobiographical. One of the things that uh, has been um, a particular focus for us in the last 16 years is that we've run a uh, company uh, for young people with the tramway and that company is called Junction 25 and that's um, been really successful and the way that the, com well, the company is made up is of young people from 11 to 18. Um, so it's a kind of like what we like to call a family group, so that everyone brings their own experiences into the room. And the way that we work with them is that we take a theme and everyone makes from their own experience of, um, of, of, of that theme, basically, and in response to that theme. Um, more recently, we've established a youth theatre in, um, it's the only youth theatre in a Scottish uh, uh, Young Offenders Institute and it's in Polmont, so it's Polmont Youth Theatre and we've taken the practices that we um, have developed with Junction 25 and we've applied it to that particular context. Um, so what we, the way that we wanted to respond to the pandemic and the lockdown situation was to create an online resource because we realised actually that lots of pe uh, teachers and youth theatre leaders were having to were continuing brilliantly to work with their young people, but that maybe we could create something that might help a structure that might help to do that 
from afar. So we've created this online resource and the online resource is based on a book that we published with Brooms Bloomsbury last year. Um, and Jess is now holding up and the book is a beginner's guide to devising theatre. So really the online resource is sort of a potted version of the book or a more streamlined version of the, of the book and um, and it's really to create solo performance. Um, so we just thought what we would do today is to go through the resource and, um, and just expand on some of the ideas a little bit and then take some questions from you. Great. So, um, I'm going to start us off. So as Tash said, I just had a handy copy of the book here. But the reason I wrote the book at the beginning was because we had um, a concern about how with devising often um, people uh, want to do it but they don't know where to start and it can be really difficult to know exactly like how to take a group through a process of devising theatre and um, with scripts and stuff there's like um, there's maybe more documentation around how people approach scripts and it's, it in itself is a structure but we were wondering about with devising like how to kind of empower people to go on a process with that um, and to offer kind of stages of the process so like you know an infrastructure of what the process could look like so um that was why we wrote the book really and and we wrote it with examples from our own experience of devising and and, and our own experience of facilitating young people to devise so i'm going to share my screen with you i hope that's going to work and so um i've got a um copy can you see it tash can you tell me if that can you see that on the screen? Yeah. 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 Okay, great. So this is the um, this is the resource, and we're going to talk you through the stages of it. So, um, we have broken it down into six stages, and what we've suggested is that like each stage, if you like, of the process, um, is kind of a session that you can do. So, um, the sessions could last anything like you could make one session last for a couple of weeks or you can make you could do it for a couple of hours I've got a friend that runs a youth theatre in Yorkshire and she's been doing it with her young people and um, I think like over sort of a week's worth of work if you like um, but yeah the, the sessions um, are um, designed to kind of accumulate um, to the point where you've got like a piece of performance that you can share or the young person at home has got a piece of performance that they can share so it's called devising solo performance at home a lot of our work is based on ensemble working we're really interested in, in ensemble and um, but obviously the young people working at home haven't got access to ensemble unless they choose to make an ensemble out of their family obviously and um, so this is kind of about how a solo artist or how a, a solo performer can make something at home from from a process of building meaning so basically session one and um, we suggested about starting with a question and for us as theatre makers um, we think that starting with questions can be a really helpful tool because from a question you go in a process of trying to find something out you want to know more about something and so therefore you um, start to gather research and you start to have a conversation from a question um, sometimes questions can be um, freeing where, where a theme can sometimes, if you have the theme of love, for example, it can feel like it's really big, where do I start? But with a question, it kind of, it, it pushes you to sort of try and answer that question creatively. So um, we have suggested that you um, start with the, with the idea of asking your young people to come up with a question of which they would like to make a piece of performance. Um, so it, just the beginning bit says like pick one of the following questions as a starting point. So we've given you a couple of questions that you can use as a starting point with your young people. Absolutely. Or you can choose another one or you can ask them to come up with one. And um, the three questions that we've proposed that you could use it are what does it feel like to grow up? What is my voice as a young person in politics and how can I use it? And who do we look up to in society today? And our feeling, these are three questions that we've used before to make theatre and our experience has been that young people have just really dived into those questions and there's loads to talk about. The idea of questions is also, it, it kind of um, celebrates diverse responses as well. And it allows for people to kind of position themselves and to inquire about something. Um, through the process of making. Um, so that's why we've always found it really exciting. And um, you can see that the structure of the resource here is that we put a little book extract. So something that we talk about in the book at the top to kind of frame each session. And then the learning activities stem from that. So the idea is to pick one of the following questions. So if you've got a group of young people, you can set them all the same question 
So then you kind of create a community of everybody making at home based on the same question. Or you could choose to give individual young people different questions, or you could work with them to come up with one. But we've talked about this idea of setting a question to start with. Um, once you've got a question that you're going to work with, we've suggested that it's about exploding that question. So um, we're suggesting that you can make an ideas board as a response to the question. And we've given two different ideas how to do that. So one is that you get one piece of card and you write the question in the middle. You ask the young person to do this. And then they fill all around the, the ideas board with um, like what, what music does it make you think of? Is it, are there any images it makes you think of? Bits of research. And they kind of just explode it so that they, that, you know, they go, oh, these are all the things I could explore in my work that that question makes me think of. Um, so you can do it like um, physically with like paper and cutting out and printing and you know making a kind of an ideas board collage or you can do it on the internet with really great tools like Pinterest where they create a Pinterest board based on a question and that gives them basically a really clear starting point for the next bit of devising that they're going to do. Um, and what we've suggested is once you kind of pick the question, develop the question that they could share that with you and that could be a really great class that you could discuss online like what everyone's ideas boards have been in relation to the question. So that was session one, which was starting with a question. Um, and session two, then what we've gone on to do is we've said, right, okay, now you've got your question. Here are some tools you can use to make from that question. Now, it's important to say that one of the, the sort of geeky things that we're really into about devising is that it allows for lots of different learning styles. So why we like it is because it doesn't, it brings everyone and all their assets that they've got already to, to the to the to bear in the rehearsal basically so if you've got young people that work really well and understand the world through movement you've got young people that work really well and they understand the world through writing or through music those things can all be collected within the devising process of strengths and it doesn't have to be that you're only good at theater because you can read big passages but actually that devising is in itself just about finding your own way creatively together through to make something at the end. So um, what we do deliberately as a sort of active choice is change the form that we work in often with young people so that they can find their own sort of joy and skill set. And um, so um, we're, we're suggesting in this sense, session two, you would start with writing. So again, a bit of a book extract about writing text. And then just a reminder in the beginning, so all the text that you're asking the young people to write now is from their question. So their question frames the piece that they're making. They're going to make a solo piece of performance at home based on this question. And then the first way they're going to explore that is by writing a piece of text. And we've suggested here a list um, in the making section of um, different ways that you can write text. So we've we've given some ideas. Um, one is that they could write a set of instructions. Um, so, for example, if the question, let's pick a question from above, was what does it feel like to grow up? Um, they might choose to write a set of instructions for growing up or a set of instructions for being an adult or, you know, framing the, the, instruct, the instructions that they write, but through the question. Um, and I've, oh, there you go. I've already, in the examples of generating text, it says that there. So um, there are some sort of ideas about how that works. Um, another way that they could write text is to write a list. So we love lists because we find them really beautiful oh, and, you doing your work. and they've got lots of um, poetry within them so for example again if you're picking um the question um, how does it feel to grow up and um, then they could write a list which is inspired by that particular question so again here there's lots of examples of types of lists write a list of people that should not be forgotten write a list of all the questions you have for the prime minister I mean, this was written before the current moment, but you can imagine that that's just even more <laughs> urgent as a thing now. Um, option number three for writing text is you could tell a personal story or share a, mem a memory. And um, we think that that's sometimes the most fertile ground for young people making performances to say, okay, like draw, think about this question and draw on an experience you've had or a memory you've had that you feel comfortable sharing um, to use within the devising process. Um, in our book, we've got loads more uh, practical ideas about writing text, but in this particular resource, we've suggested three, and we thought that you could give young, young people the choice of, of how they would like to write text based on these three different ideas, or if you think it's more appropriate, set them a task based on it, and um, make them do all three, like if it feels like that's the right way that you want to work. Um, again, just to note at the end, just to remember to develop um, any idea 
to just to use the question as a starting point. So it's so it's framing that the question is framing the piece that they're making at home. Um, and then as a sharing mechanism for this session about writing text, you can hold an online session where everybody shares their text. And you talk about the process of making it, or they can share it in written form, in audio form, whatever way feels like the most um, appropriate. But it's about, you know, sharing the process as well as the final thing they're going to make, which is their solo performance. It's about it's about breaking the, it down and going, okay, we're, we're playing with text. How does that feel? Um, that's really interesting. I really loved the way that you did that. Like, okay, you've got that now as something that you can draw on when you when you start to make your performance. Um, okay, so. I think I'm passing over to Tash. <laughs> You'll be relieved. I'm having a break. Um, so the next session is um, all based around creating movement and choreography. So we um, often use movement and choreography with young people because, as Jess said, that a lot of young people who, particularly young people who are interested in drama, maybe sometimes actually don't express themselves in the best way through writing. Um, and so we're really interested in how can we find different ways for young people to express how they feel about things. Also, I think sometimes it's really hard to say things. And so we and also maybe sometimes it's not appropriate to actually use words to express how you feel about something. So so we sometimes feel that creating a choreography or I will talk um, a bit later about um, making um, performance images. Um, sometimes this can help young people to express something that they that they feel and not feel vulnerable within it. Um, so, um, so we so yes so we often use movement and choreography to explore things. Um, one one of the things I've been thinking a lot about actually recently is how important movement is during this period of lockdown and. Um, and encouraging young people to try and move because actually I think a lot of young people have been stuck maybe being homeschooled at a desk and you know haven't and haven't kind of had that kind of like physical creative expression that they may have had if they if they do go to youth theatre or to um, a youth dance group or if they are lucky enough to have dance or, or theatre at school um, so and also I've been thinking about actually maybe is it is it how do we support them to be able to feel comfortable to create a choreography in their own bedroom or in their own living room at home when maybe the home environment may be not the right, you know, they may feel um worried about that. Um so I suppose so I suppose it's interesting to consider those things when framing this session because uh, they will be making it at home. Um so some of the kind of um, I, uh, sort of things that we are interested in exploring in terms of movement is um, kind of unlocking, I suppose, um, maybe different exploring something or unlocking something differently by responding physically to it rather than always responding verbally to it. And a few ways that um, we suggest that you can do that in this session is one that we really like that we use often and we often use this with young people who maybe don't have a huge amount of experience with um, movement and choreography and that is through gesture um so gesture is you know it is an it is an everyday um thing so we all gesture when we when we when we talk um so we often find that young people can, with this one, that they feel most comfortable doing this one. It makes most sense to them because it feels sort of most real world, if you like. Um, so some examples of creating movement from gesture is um, that particularly in this in this uh, in the lockdown situation is that people can go outside and, ob and observe people and recreate six gestures that they might see. Um, I was thinking that if you if we're gonna if we're gonna frame everything through the questions, um, so if we took the question who do we look up to in society today, it might be that um, you they want to watch a television event and then copy eight gestures of the people that they see on the television event. It might be that they you want to create something where they have to look through um, an online magazine or a magazine that they have at home. And look up um, and and look at the, the gestures that celebrities are making, and then put them into their own bodies in order to kind of like critique how is it that 
people are presented in the media. Um, so I think you could re you can really kind of actually look at some quite difficult questions around sort of society and how we present ourselves through a kind of through movement. Um, and with this one, um, we always talk about how do you then um, uh, how do you then create it into a, into a sequence, if you like. And I suppose we always think about um, doing it through um, repetition, through slowing it down, so looking at speed, looking at repetition, um, looking um, at um, what we might layer it with. So do, if we've made a list in the session before, with, in the text session, do we then layer the, the gestural sequence with um, a, a, a text list that the young person has written? Um, is it that they choose a really specific track of music that frames the gestures in a different way? Um, so we really talk a lot about how do we um, juxtapose maybe those um, those gestures to give them to reframe them or give them a different meaning. Um, another way that we're suggesting um, to look at uh, to look at um, choreography and movement through is using words. Um, often um, we use words to create movement. So for example, we might ask a young person to choose a feeling. Um, that they want to express and five, find five different words for that feeling and then to create a movement for each one. And then similarly, when in, in structuring that sequence, we might use repetition or speed um, to, um, to, to think about how those different movements are communicated or what, which, bit, which ones you want to emphasize more. Um, and we've got several other different ways that you can use words um, to create movement. There's lots of different. Um, so, um, for example, we've got um, an, ex uh, an example of like taking a famous speech from history and actually recreating that, um, but through movement. So to try and understand the speech, I think often a lot of young people sometimes find it hard to process language, actually. But if they have to break it down, put it into their bodies, then they understand they they maybe understand it emotionally in a different in a different way um, and then the last one is through metaphor so we often use this one so in in order to try and express something that maybe a young person feel feels um, a, a feeling that they want to express so um, for example we could look at the give and take of a friendship or a relationship and we could use this through creating kind of metaphorical movements, which are about pushing and pulling away from each other, um, or a feeling of being on the edge of something might be to create lots of different um, movements which are balancing. Um, so, for with the movement in, I think it's always really important to, to do it in stages. So it's you're creating the movements, but then you're finessing the sequence in in terms of like editing and really making sure that you found the essence of each movement and you know how you get from one movement to the other and um using the different tools which we which we've um within the guide we kind of talk a little bit more about um so I'm gonna, then the next session that we're suggesting is session four which is um creating performance images and for creating performance images, we similarly, I suppose, to the movement, we often um, think about performance images as creating um, metaphors, but using objects and materials. Um, so the process that we usually go on with this, that we're suggesting that you guys follow, would be a process for um, of identifying a feeling or an idea that you want to express that comes from the original question. So if the original question was, what does it feel like to grow up? Um, and maybe one of those, maybe one of the things you want to explore within what does it feel like to grow up is um, about um, the idea of kind of finding your voice and maybe an adult constantly telling you, like pushing you down again, if you like. Um, we. Um, I'm just using an example for, from something that we did. We um, we we ex 
we want one of the young people that we were working with wanted to talk about like your, her bubble was constantly burst by adults so we got as many different objects as we could that were relating to um uh that could that could be a bubble basically so we got you know uh, bubbles that you blow um we got chewing gum we got balloons we got um uh, lo uh, big bags that you could blow hot air into. We've got loads and loads of different objects that she could make bubbles with. And then we've got lots of different things that could burst the bubble. And we spent the whole session working on what felt like the best kind of um, visual metaphor for that, for that, um, for that feeling. Um, and she created a really beautiful image where she started with, she said she's a tiny balloon that was popped and then the balloon got bigger and bigger and bigger until she had a massive massive balloon that she was blowing up and then someone came and popped it um but to get to that point she played with loads and loads and loads of different objects so what we're suggesting is that you identify a feeling that they identify a feeling they make a list of all the objects that they could use they then play with all those objects and find all the different ways they can illustrate it, illustrate the idea and they show them to yourself or to the group and then feel which ones kind of work the best mm. um, and we've kind of got a list of different objects that um, we might explore so I suppose a note is really to is that it's really fun to play with loads of stuff but it's also really um, we always really try to encourage the young people just to, to really focus down on like one or two things that work really really well so that the metaphor really comes comes across because often I think what happens is it's so like brilliant there's so many different options that you just kind of you can lose it you can lose the uh, meaning with too many things um also, so I, think it's quite to, I think it's important to also say that when you're setting young people uh, the task to go and do that and uh, make sure that they're also thinking about the environment like the area that they're doing it in so if you're playing <laughs> with like a strawberry yeah. and you really want to see like what the kind of quality of the strawberry is and how that kind of what kind of image you can make then just make sure you do that maybe in an outside area or you know if you are just make sure that you've kind of thought about it because what we don't want is loads of um <laughs> people at home being like what's happened <laughs> i've been exploring how strawberry can make me feel like the sensation of feeling falling in love but it's all over my wall you know that kind of thing just putting putting that in as a parent of three <laughs> <laughs> um and then session five is um exploring music and um, I have to say, from my perspective, I am really, really not uh, very musical at all. But we use loads of music in our performances. And um, we, or we often just really try and encourage young people to, to use music and to make music, even if they feel like they can't sing or they can't, they don't understand how to, you know, how to make music. We feel like there's actually loads and loads of different ways um, that you can that you can uh, use music um, and I think also especially with teenagers music is just such um it's just a really big deal for them um, I think it's often a lot of um, teenagers way of connecting with the world at, at maybe like quite a confusing time um, and I think they make sense of a lot of things through it so um, so with in with the um, section I'm just, I've just lost which session we're on, session five. <laughs> so within session, session five, um, uh, we can, uh, we, the, the one things that we're suggesting and ideas for choosing music is it might be that it's a song that you always hear on the radio. It might be that it's um, a song that reminds you of someone or something, a song from a recognizable TV program or film, a song from the past, a song that you feel something, makes you feel something. I often actually use that with young people to create um, movement. I actually say, is there a song that makes you feel something? And then we create the movement from the song. And then sometimes we take that so the song away and put it a different song in. Um, just as an aside, um, a piece of music that really matters to you. Um, music that makes you want to dance. Music that really says what you wish you could say. And then ways to perform that piece of music. It might be that they might sing it a cappella. It might be that they play it on a on an instrument. It might be that they make a new arrangement of it. 
It might be that they play the song without any words. It might be that they make an electronic version of it. They might remix it. They might lip sync to it. That's my favorite because I can't sing. So I'm always um, I'm always doing lip syncing in our performances. Um, they might sing along to it. They might find a traditional song and then reimagine that traditional song. Um, they might write their own song in, in response to the question. So I should probably say that all of these things should be done through the question. Um, so you can use these as, as ways of choosing music and exploring music, but they should all link into the into the question that they're exploring. So now the final session that we're suggesting in the six sessions, and then we're going to take questions, is that um, it's about composition. And this is kind of almost, I think, the thing that people have the biggest questions about in relation to devising because we're working within a non-narrative um, way. So it's not got a story like a lot of theatre, you know, um, there's a set of characters and a story and something happens and, you know, it, it works in that way. But with this, it's almost like thinking about performance like a collage, like um, it's, a, it's about creating um, an order of things which makes sense emotionally and it takes us on a journey and it creates a sense of process, but it's not about um, and of course, arc matters, but it's not about thinking about things like what's happening to this character, unless that's the type of performance you're trying to make. So the way that we thought that you would be able to explain this is, OK, you know, we've done now five sessions. We picked a question and then we explored that question in four different types of ways. Now, what you've got is almost think about it like a bank of material, performance material. You've got some text, you've got some movement, you've got an image and you've got some music. So now let's think about how you can play with the order of those things. Which things do you want to put together? How do you want to create um, a, a piece of solo performance using those elements? And so this is about thinking about compositional tools like layering, like repetition, like um, uh, creating, um, like fragmenting things, um, juxtaposition. These are all tools that you can use to, to, to play with things. Sometimes we like to play games like, OK, so uh, take your material and perform it four different ways in, in a different order. OK, try it again. You know, which bits can you slow down? Which bits can you make faster? Like, you know, um, or maybe it's just that one of the things you've made feels like really truthful and that's the thing you want to do. And so there you want to extend that. You know, there are so many choices and it's about I think what we're trying to do with this process is give give the power over to the young person, but help them with stages to be able to do that and to kind of break it down and, and to give them choices all the way through. Because ultimately the point of all of this work is to is to give them ownership and authorship and investment in the work that they make to get them to try new forms of theatre, to get them to to, to see their uh, house or wherever it is that they are as a bit of a laboratory, as a rehearsal space to try things, to make stuff that they wouldn't usually have considered making and um, to empower the solo experience because often we're trying to get them to work as an ensemble and they make a lot of these decisions together but at home it's just you so so take the solo moment and, and create something and and, and and try and do that like um, as, as something that feels exciting and uh, yeah, it feels like an exploration. So we are going to, uh, that's basically the resource that we created. And in our book, there's like loads and loads more practical ideas about how you might devise. And on our website, there's loads of examples of film and footage of fil uh, performances that we've made. And um, for us, it's always been about the young people um, making the performances based on the questions they have about the world that they live in. And us, for, for us, it's been about how do we give them the tools to do that and offer them tools and offer them processes so that they can that they can take ownership over. So we're going to start talking. It's very strange not to be in the same room because we usually are in the same room together and it's uh, it's nice to, uh, to be that. But we're all in this boat at the moment and this is amazing that technology can make this even possible. So we I think that Sarah is going to come back on the screen and, and we're going to answer questions. But thanks so much for um, for listening to us for that amount of time. And I hope that you find it useful um, and, and totally use it in whatever way feels useful. Um, I did a, a movement task with my uh, son who six the other day uh, are the gestures that we'd seen on our daily walk and it was uh, I took it completely just as a tool by itself and we spent about an hour making gestures one to ten and it was very um felt like there was something in it you know in the day of of different learning experiences but anyway yeah I'll stop talking and I'll let Sarah come back on screen I will stop sharing my screen Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, I found that really useful. Hopefully everyone else did. 
Um, just before I start with the questions, there's been a few people in the chat box that have asked where they can get hold of that um, resource document. So I've just popped a link to it in the chat box, um, but I will send it via email along with this recording to everybody that's registered for the event as well. So don't worry, you will get a copy. Um, so we've had a few questions in and quite a few have been similar. So I'm, I've grouped them into topics. But I thought one of the nice ones would be to start, um, they've actually asked about what the best thing you think um, about working in um, performances, in performing arts. It's, do you know why it's such a brilliant question? Because at the <laughs> moment, like we're experiencing as a sector, lots of turbulence and lots of kind of um, conversations about why we're relevant <laughs> and uh you know um and but for me there's something about the live experience which feels so intrinsic to who we are as human beings and how important it is to share meaning in spaces where we can see each other's faces and be in the same room and i think like that's how we differ from other art forms and um, is that we we're saying like these are my thoughts and reflection i think all art is about um reflecting who we are as human beings and our experience of the world that we live in. And so theatre and, and performance is an enactment of those reflections, like live in spaces with other people, while we try to make meanings and we try to, you know, be in things together. And I think for me, like, that's what performance is about and, I, and, and, the, and, the, and the buzz of it. And we see this actually in the young men that we work with in the prison, you know, we see that performance is a buzz, like it's a high, it's like a it's like a, a net, like a, it makes them feel alive. And I think that's for me anyway, the best thing about being involved in performance and why I will continue to say that it is a very necessary part of the world that we live in <laughs> going with but that's yeah that's, I could rant about that for ages but I'll probably I should probably let Tasha. <laughs> I'm just aware there's a few questions in the chat box as well so maybe we could just take one each and then just so that we can definitely get through all yeah, of them. That sounds good yeah um, so then the other, uh, we had quite a few questions obviously on devising new theatre um, and one of them was, what is the first question you ask yourself when devising a new piece of work? Um, well, I think for us actually it's all about finding the question first, especially when we're working with young people. Um, so so I think, I, I suppose the first question that we would ask ourselves is what is the question that we're exploring? <laughs> And then, um, then what's the first uh, in what 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 feels like the first the, the most important way to explore that question? So, is it that the first thing that we want to do is look at it through a through a text lens, or do we want to look at it through a movement lens? Um, um, I, I suppose it's it's all about finding the right question and asking why is this question important to us, and what what is what is the um, the question that what that each of us have in relation to that question. So what's our own personal connection to that question um, yeah. is important. I know that yeah. we're not supposed to be answering the same question, but I did just want to say, like, Tash and I are just about to make a, a piece online, our first piece ever online with some young people soon. And the question that we proposed for that process, usually we would like them to come up with a question, but we kind of framed the offer to come work with us through the question, how can we be together even when we're apart? because that was the question that's in our like hearts and minds right now so it feels like yeah we, I suppose we make theatre to understand questions that's probably like how to yeah. do it. That's nice. Um, would you recommend any interesting devised pieces you've seen recently and we've also had a similar um, question in the chat box that have come up about whether any mm -hmm. other companies and practitioners are your, your you know your style of creating theatre you've been inspired by? Mm. Just Tash, we should dance this one to get together. But like the, the 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 in the back of the book, right? There are there are um, five case studies of devising companies that we think are pretty awesome, and we picked them based on the fact that we thought that they were amazing <laughs> and exciting. And there is Entourant Good from Belgium, who are just they're exploring form and like like it's really exciting the work that they make they do one-on-one -on -one stuff they do experience theater they do all sorts of stuff like that there's quarantine which is a manchester-based company that have made some amazing devising work for much biographical performance in the past and um, there's an artist called nick green who made a show called Bar um trilogy which is on the main stage of the barbican which is about like uh, for feminism and women's bodies essentially that we also thought was awesome um who, what are the other ones in the book tash i can't remember which ones they picked because we love so many theater companies <laughs> <laughs> all the time oh the team from new york a totally amazing company you know 
uh, if you've never experienced a performance by the team, really making stuff about contemporary American issues, like really pushing like ideas of form and like gig, using gig theatre as well in a lot in their work. Um, the team, on Toronto, who's the... Who's I would the say team? some, um, uh, some um, other ones that aren't in the book but who are making stuff currently, I would say... Um, you know, Bryony Kimmings' work is really interesting in terms of device theatre and looking at different form. Um, I would say there's a Scottish company, um, dance company called 21 Common, who make really interesting um, uh, device performance work, but maybe it's more sort of on the choreography end of the spectrum. Um, and I think I mean, we're really influenced by Forced Entertainment um, and their kind of ongoing practice. Um, I think, you know, uh, people like Third Angel um, and, um, and I hope Mamalian, you hear <laughs> The other one was Mammalian Diving Reflex from Canada, um, who makes such cool work. Like one of the, the shows I make is um, in, in the book called All the Sex I Ever Had, which is getting older people to, to, to basically write text about like all their sort of experiences. Um, in, in their sexual awakenings and, and relationships on, and and it's like a, a gorgeous gorgeous piece of work that they remake in communities that they visit to and 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 I suppose what we were excited about is exploding the conversation about devising like to include all these brilliant companies that often like maybe aren't documented as, as much as they should be mm. it's like a thank you list you'll probably think of loads more after this and you're I know I'm I'm really <laughs> There's the amazing company that's based in Bristol that I'm trying to remember the name of. Um, you can always share them with me after yeah, we can share them with everyone. <laughs> um, we've, all, we've got lots of questions on themes um, and what themes and stimulus you've created. You know, have you created one for, um, you know, what's your most successful device piece and what themes and stimulus have you used? Um, no, you go. You know, it's your turn. Um, so we've um so we've I feel like we've we, we, because we've been we, because we ran Junction 25 for such a long time we made loads and loads and loads and loads of um, different um different pieces of work but it's really important that that the young people came up with um uh with some of the themes but also that we also sometimes gave them a theme just to 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 sort of mix it up a bit and and. Um, so I think so we've done we've made we've made a piece called I Hope My Heart Goes First, which was about love and looking at kind of familial familiar love, looking at um, romantic love, looking at loss, looking at. Um, and I think that was probably one of our most successful shows really early on. We um, also made a, a, a piece about um, spaces where that young people were not allowed into, which, which which was in a nightclub. And from that piece gemmed this idea that the young people would like to maybe make a piece with their parents um, because one of the girls was really obsessed with the fact that she just felt like her mum was constantly looking over her shoulder and she was talking about that a lot in the piece that we made in the nightclub and so we made a piece called From Where I'm Standing where the young people invited their parents into the rehearsal um, to make a show with them and I have to say I've never been so nervous before, before any rehearsal process started because suddenly we were opening up our process to the, the parents of the young people that you know that they were trusting us with their young people for like the last few years to make things and suddenly they were coming into the process as well um and I think that that show was was really successful um because I think it just really kind of broke a lot of molds and and um uh and um was maybe something that people at that at that point hadn't really seen on parents and children on stage together before um, I mean this was about 12 years ago now I think so it was a long time ago um, we've more recently I mean I think really interestingly uh, I, what the young people are interested in has, has changed so I, I feel like in the last kind of six or seven years I've seen a real kind of swing to young people being interested in we made a piece about uh, young people using their voices in politics we've made a piece about uh, we did an exchange with a, a group in um, Berlin about um, looking at the distance between us, but really what we were looking at was Brexit. Um, um, and you know these are the things that the young people have become more interested in. We also made a piece about celebrity um, and you know who do we look up to in society. So I think that I've what I've seen in the last seven years is young people become more politicised. Um, 
and wanting to make more work about that actually yeah I don't know do you want to add any more Jeff? Like my most powerful one was the one that we made around the time of the European referendum which is about politics uh mm -hmm. called a bit of bite and uh it was like young people like i mean we didn't know what the what was going to happen to the world at that point i mean it was already happening but in like, fact i was just i was just saying to the other day to my partner that it was we made it just when president trump had started running we, we decided they wanted to make it in response to the fact that they all thought trump was really weird and we just started running and no one thought he'd get in and then mm -hmm. joe cox was murdered the night before our opening night and then the Brexit Brexit vote went in the the, the, the like night we closed, so it was like a really really wow. politically active time. Sorry, Jess, I totally interrupted. No, no, and the young people. Um, I was thinking that I could maybe we can maybe share a little video of it actually, but like there was a young there was a, the the young people were like creating these amazing performance images which were like really urgent. And the audience and there was this bit in it which i'll never forget which was this like young person called Laika, who's actually on our board as well and she's a young muslim woman and she um she was like 17 at the time and she wrote this piece of text which was called dear person on the, in the street which was like about basically people just like saying stuff to her like go back to your own country and all this kind of awful stuff and just like talking back to that in the performance and it was just the most empowered like urgent piece of performance that a young person's made and we talked a long time about how to hold that in the show and how to like support her in it but she was also just really clear about like this is what I want to do and I'm using performance to say the thing that I can't say I'm using performance like to, to do it and then um, and those are the moments where I feel like yeah that really like affects me and I'm like because the question's really urgent so we're all making it's making itself it's like everyone's yeah. just like writing and making I think I think it's also important to say that she you know she was at the end of her journey with us in terms of the fact she was you know 17 she'd been working with us for quite a few years by that point and so she felt like she could do it like I don't you know I would not never ask a young person who had just joined the group to uh, well, make a, something like that it was in, in response to the question like um, how the quite the bigger question was how what is my voice and how can you use it today mm. and she wrote and we said um, write a write a write a letter that you really want to be heard i think was the task i think and then that's what she wrote and of course then you go in a process of like let's talk about that material like how can we hold that but yeah as tashi said it's about like who your collaborator is and how soon you are into the process of collaborating mm -hmm. <laughs> just go straight yeah. in there like day one go for it you know it's like there's a, there's a support system in place yeah well maybe following on from that we've actually had a comment um a question in the chat box about what advice you'd give for your young know, young performers about performing with confidence we talk a lot about confidence because it's because we ask young people to be themselves on stage a lot and so um i think the advice i think it would be about spending a lot of time talking about the power of your voice and why your voice matters and making them feel like their voice matters and what they have to say is important and just kind of like endorsing that because I find I would never be like do it because it's performance you know like but more like because you matter you know mm -hmm. and like because you you know and 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 like let's keep let's talk about how you because sometimes like young people in our companies be like yeah I get that you want that that bit doesn't make sense to me and it's like okay so then we need to change it it's not like you need to do it more or better or anything like that it's like okay we need to change it so because it's about empowering your voice and like how do you like really like uh, you know let's talk about like how you can have the biggest impact with the thing that you want to say and I suppose uh, I, I would also think about my own role and like what I had to do about um just like like affirmation affirmation and support and like you know going on the journey together and um, don't know if that answers the question actually it's a really interesting question it's making me think about those things but that's... We've, we've actually got a slight extension as well to that question that we we got asked before the webinar about um whether you found any methods effective in supporting young people to feel comfortable when sharing their solo performance i mean i guess now's the time as well we are, we're asking students to make solo performance and then sharing it with the rest of the group and you know some people might not feel comfortable with that and then how you know if there's any strategies to overcome that sort of you know it's okay to share your performance with you know with other people i i think it would be useful to come up so so i think we wrote this based on like a feeling of that the teacher or the youth leader would already have a relationship with that group 
So some of that work would have already happened in the room and we were thinking, right, how can you but I do think it would be useful to think about, so in, in, our, in our book, there's a whole section about building the ensemble, which is what we do in the beginning. So like making the right conditions for working. And I think that's a really useful section of the book in terms of like some, some actual tools that you can use to like, but I think when we're talking about these online environments and sharing things, riffing, I think a manifesto, coming up with a manifesto together for sharing. So like, because we're all on screen, what would be a really good set of rules for us? So that like, if, if, and, and, and you know, like I teach at higher education and it's funny how sometimes I'm teaching and I'm doing a lecture and the students are like, literally like, you know, and I'm like, okay, we need to have a manifesto for like how we're gonna do this because if I'm talking, I really want to feel like you're listening. So can we just, can we talk about active listening? We talk about like, like how do we, you know, so maybe um, we can do a thing where in the chat box, everybody writes something that they like you know, so it's actually talking about liking in the beginning or that you actively have a face, which at the end is like, you know, whatever it is that you're going to like these little mechanisms that you've got to make people feel supported and supportive and um, to understand that it's difficult and to maybe say if people want to offer their performance, that's great, but please don't feel you have to do it as mm. well. Maybe you'll do it in the next session or whatever, but I think it's about Think, I don't know about what you think, Tash, but I think it's maybe about creating the right environment and creating, thinking about how Zoom or whatever technology you're using can give you those tools to support the person who's on their own doing it. So everybody has to give a, a response. Everybody has to say something good. You know, it, that, you, that it's all right to lean into the positive, like celebration of things rather than maybe in the classroom, you'd be a bit more like, hmm, don't know if that worked or how do we, you know, but obviously it's a wee bit hard to hear that when you're by yourself. So then just focusing well, on the... I was also thinking about maybe it's about building it up as well so that within the session, you maybe take, you do a, a task all together where you say, right, we're going to, we're all going to write a list based on the things yeah. that we love, for example, and everyone writes a list on the, based on the things that we love. And you just do a continue, you know, you do a continuous performance where everyone says one thing after each other until all everyone said everything that there's there is to say. Mm, yeah. So and maybe you know the maybe the the, te the teacher the, puts a p track of music on in the background and it, in that becomes the performance. So or maybe it's that we've created a gestural sequence all together to start with and we all perform it at the same time. Um, so that maybe in a session a bit further down the road, they feel like they can then, or later in the session, they feel like they can do it, so they can perform it by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but that's how I would do it, just to build it up so that everyone does things together and then every, and then you just sort of build up by that. I was going to say also, I think it's really interesting in terms of how they might present, whether they present something live or whether they actually make a video that they use the compositional skills. Um, you know, if they've got those tools at home to be able to do that, um, that, 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 that they, that, that might also be a way if it's actually just that they're creating a video so they're only performing to the, to what they can then control and what they can then edit. I that mean, might be. One of the things that like, just off the back of that, like I'm really thinking about a lot at the moment is that young people are devising in their lives. They're doing TikTok and stuff, right? That's like essentially, like that tool, I mean, you can discuss that tool until, you know, the end of the day. But the point is that in within that tool is stuff like composition, is stuff like editing, is stuff like, you know, um, yeah. devi it's devising, it's creating content, basically. And I think also um, they're sharing that out with each other. Like, you know, I think we need to catch up somehow. Like the other day mm. I was speaking to a 12 year old that I saw in the street and she was talking about making content and stuff and sharing it and 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 she said oh I, you know i've got like a two thousand uh, followers and i was like what like i literally <laughs> think that our theater company's got like 900 you know, like, <laughs> i've been working in theater for like 20 years and i've you've got more followers than me you know so i think we probably need to like yeah, there's also something in that they're already working mm -hmm. in that form and maybe it's about us they're digitally we need to catch up with them probably and keep it yeah. Yeah, um, I know we're quickly running out. Oh, sorry, Tashi. No, I was just I was just going to say that I think there's also something really interesting in whether it's that they're presenting it live or that they've pre-recorded it, that they can actually think also about like where it is that they perform it. Like if it's in their garden or if it's, you know, framed by a window or like what, what are the sort of metaphors that they can bring in or the framing that they can bring in um, 
visually as well, which they would never be able to do in the in the drama room at school, but that they but that actually could add a whole other layer to meaning of what they've created, you know, because if they delivered a text out of a window, they could actually do it out of their window from at home. Like, um, like, like that makes me really excited. <laughs> like almost like it's a site specific, like home a site kind of thing is that what you mean Tash like the, yeah, yeah. your home environment can cr can provide you with so much more opportunity for meaning maybe yeah exactly yeah exactly um I know we're quickly running out of time and um anybody that needs to head off at two feel free to 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 leave the call I know um but I just wondered we had quite a lot of questions on socially distanced drama um and obviously that's that's what people want to know um but I just wondered whether you know, with schools perhaps maybe returning in September, what you guys thought about the future performance at schools and how, you know, you might have some students that are returning part time and others that might still be at home and some that might be in the class and whether there's any techniques you think that they, you know, some teachers out there might be able to still introduce theatre into their curriculum and get students excited about it. I feel that we are on a journey with this anyway in our lives, Tash and I, because we because we now run a department in a theatre. Um, which, so we're constantly talking about how we can get young people back in spaces. Um, and I think the way that I feel is that we have to constantly look for the opportunities and frame it like, OK, you know, like this is the current moment we live in. This is the burning question, which is how can we make stuff when we're together and, and use that as an opportunity to for, for young people to because there are tools you can explore and, and it doesn't need to be like, OK, here's your box. You can't go outside it. It can be like that. I, I feel like it's about how you frame it, how you frame the the, the um, exploration for young people um, and making it feel like an opportunity, like a temporary opportunity to explore something differently. Um, and 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 lean into the hope of the situation rather than like this is meant we can't do x y and z things you know we can't make a machine like we would have usually we can't do all these things where we but but actually like maybe there's some really beautiful things we can make about like how we organ how we stay you know like there's loads of mm -hmm. exercises you can use which are about staying apart and you know and and this is you know and 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 maybe leaning into the narratives that this is but hopefully temporary and this just allows us these are our creative parameters what can we make and you know we in our work we've got a, we've got a, an ensemble of dancers that we work with an ensemble of actors and what we're starting to do is go right what can we make not like we can't make anything but we have to make stuff so what what can we make like what does this time give us how can we use those tools how can we learn some new stuff and like you know not worry I mean of course we're worrying about everything all the time but how could just I suppose how we can we lean into the potential of things as makers as creative people you know yeah absolutely and I think it's also about playing with form as well and you know saying okay we can't perform maybe in the same way but actually we are creative people and um and especially this kind of devised process I think lends it to you know what is the right what is the right form and what is the right structure actually should we make a radio program or mm. should we make a film or should we make um um yeah a series of silent images that's performed live or is it a series of things that is captured through a window you know i feel like um or a group activity that's done on zoom you know i think it's really an interesting time to kind of throw up the art form a little bit and say okay what do we mean by creating performance or having a live event I think I mean for me it's just about like leaning into the positive yeah great okay well thank you so much we've got to, to I know we've got loads of answer questions that we didn't get through either but um maybe I could take you know half an hour of you guys ladies time and later on and we could see if we can answer some of the others but um yeah definitely. thank you to Thank you for everyone to, uh, that's joined us today. Um, hope you found it really useful. And as I said, I'll share the link with you um, and the recording to this webinar. And I know that Tashi shared a few links to the website as well. So I'll, I'll share all those after the call. So hope you have a lovely afternoon. There's not too many thundery showers near you. Um, I literally just found the, the chat box. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Good that you were there. 
you can have a scroll through that. <laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you both so much. Um, I know it's, you know, you're all moving house and it's all frantic as well. So um, thank you for giving up your time. and Thank you for coming to listen. It's We really appreciate yeah, thank you coming to turn up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Okay. I'll say Bye. goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.